Hello everyone and welcome back to One Soccer. I am your host for today, Josh Deming, and I am back with another episode of Canadians Abroad. This week was a massive week for many of our Canadians. There were some great goals, big moments, and some transfer speculation as well. So hopefully you guys are excited, and if you are, let's get into the episode now. To kick off this week's episode of Canadians Abroad, we'll focus in on Alfonso Davies, who over the weekend began the match on the bench, but was subbed in on the 60th minute. After coming on, Davies was very involved. He created two chances, had two shots, completed 96% of his passes, and had 35 touches. Bayern went on to draw Hoffenheim 1-1 to sit first place in the table with a 17-8-3 record. Dortmund had the opportunity to draw level on points with Bayern. However, they gave up a 97th minute equalizer, meaning that they drew 3-3 against Stuttgart and Bayern are still two points ahead of them in the title race. Midweek, Bayern played Manchester City in the second leg of the Champions League quarterfinals. They went into the match after losing the first leg 3-0 and they drew 1-1, meaning that they were eliminated 4-1 on aggregate. Davies did not start against City, but he did come off the bench in the second half and looked decent. However, in the end, it wasn't enough as Bayern crashed out in the quarterfinals once again. Now I know you've all heard this saying, if you can't beat them, join them? Well that may be the case for Alfonso Davies, because it is being reported by Florian Plettenberg that Real Madrid and Manchester City have Alfonso Davies on their short list and could make a move for him this summer. Davies has fallen a bit out of form since the arrival of Thomas Tuchel, so it'll be very interesting to see if a move will happen this summer, because it's also being reported that initial talks between Bayern and Davies on a contract renewal did take place, but a decision on his future will be made in the summer. We will all just have to wait and see what happens with Alfonso Davies and where his future may lie, but one thing is for sure, seeing him in the Premier League under a manager like Pep Guardiola would be very intriguing. Davies is obviously an exceptional player. He's very quick, he's tactical, and he's a strong attacker. Um, I do think it could be a great move for City as he can fill the hole left from João Cancelo's departure. Um, as for legitimacy, Davies is obviously going to be a very expensive player. And right now the question is, what are City's priorities going to be this summer when it comes to bringing in uh, new talent? So we'll have to see. Obviously, it would be great to see a Canadian in the Premier League, but we also know Madrid will be hot on City's tail. But Pep is, you know, looking to revolutionize his side at any chance he can get. He loves players who are versatile and flexible. And Davies can really be anywhere up and down the whole left flank of the pitch, you know, after Zinchenko and obviously Cancelo's departure, I think City perhaps require a more attacking minded player in the left back position and Davies fits the bill. You know, he's a commanding player. He's a natural winger. He can play top level football and he's used to playing possession at a high level, which is something that City truly requires. Over the weekend, Jonathan David started and played all 90 minutes as a striker in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, David had one shot, 43 touches, he completed 86% of his passes, created four chances, and scored his 20th goal of the season. It was a pure striker's finish as David charged into the box to coolly finish off Remy Cabela's perfect cross. Lille went on to win the match 2-1 against Montpellier to sit fifth place in the table with a 16-7-8 record. After breaking the 20-goal mark for the first time in his career, David is still level with Mbappe at the top of the league on scoring charts with 20 goals. David is currently having himself a prolific season, prompting this tweet from Fabrizio Romano. Understand price tag to sign Jonathan David this summer will be around 65 million euros, as Lille expect top clubs to move for the Canadian striker. David scored again today, it's 20 goals in Ligue 1 now, top scorer of the league tied with Kylian Mbappe. Florian Plettenberg reported that Bayern scouted David and are monitoring his situation. Bayern's chief scout has a good opinion of him, but things are not concrete at this stage. The club's bosses and Tuchel will hold concrete talks about the summer targets in the next few weeks. David to Bayern could make a lot of sense because Bayern haven't really replaced Robert Lewandowski who scored so many goals for them. Chupamoteng just hasn't been able to replicate that type of form and with a player like Sadio Mane potentially looking to be sold this summer, spending those 65 million euros on a player like Jonathan David could be a perfect match. He's already proven this season that he can play in that 4-2-3-1 system as the lone striker, which is exactly what Thomas Tuchel looks like he's going to do. And let's be honest, every Canadian out there will be excited by the fact that you could see both Jonathan David and Alfonso Davies playing together at club level. Alex Gange, Ruzik, and myself recently did a transfers episode on Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies, and Tejan Buchanan, and talking about the big links that are surrounding all three players. So if you want to check out that video, be sure to head over to the One Soccer YouTube channel. Kyle Lahren was back in action over the weekend, starting and playing 68 minutes as a striker in a 4-3-3 system. 
In the match, Laren had one shot, 25 touches, he created two chances, and picked up an assist. It was a cheeky assist as Amala played a little 1-2 with Laren, who did well to set up Amala to poke the ball home. With that assist, Laren now has 5 goals and 2 assists and 10 La Liga appearances so far this season. Vitalid went on to win the match 2-1 against Villarreal to sit 14th place in the table with a 9-5-15 record. This was such a massive win for Vitalid as they are now 5 points out of the relegation places. Amala and Laren are starting to find some real chemistry. This is back-to-back -back matches where Amala has scored and it was set up by Laren. This is fantastic news for Valladolid, and if the duo can continue scoring goals like this, it will go a long way to help them avoid relegation. Alistair Johnson started once again over the weekend, playing all 90 minutes as a right back in a 4-3-3 system. In the match, Johnson had 95 touches, 1 recovery, 2 clearances, he created 2 chances, and picked up an assist. It was a great assist as Johnson did so well to get the cross in, which was headed home at the back post by Maeda. Celtic went on to win the match 4-1 to sit first place in the table with a 31-1 record. Johnson continues to put in fantastic performances week in, week out, and on April 30th, he will have another opportunity to win a trophy with Celtic as they take on Rangers in the Scottish Cup final. Alistair Johnson has not been a Celtic player for very long, but he's already a fan favorite. The club adores him, the fans love him, his manager really rates him, and in his first season here, he could potentially do the treble, winning both domestic cups and the league. Quite an achievement for such a special player. Derek Cornelius was back in action this past week, starting and playing all 90 minutes as a center back in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, Cornelius had 67 touches, 7 recoveries, 4 clearances, he completed 93% of his passes, and helped Malmo pick up yet another clean sheet. The match finished 1-0 Malmo and they sit first place in the table with a 3-0-0 record. Derek Cornelius has really upped his game ever since he moved to Malmo. His confidence is growing, he's become such an important player to that backline already, and if he continues with this type of form, there's no reason to think that John Herman won't make him a starting center back going forward for the Canadiens national team. That's been a, a bright start to, to, to life at Malmö with, with Derek Cornelius. I mean, we saw it in the Cup. It was a bit of a weird format. Start of the year playing just Cup games, and despite being thrown right in the deep end, he did well, scored a goal in one of his earlier games. They fell out on penalties, but he had good games across the board, and now the league season started, uh, you know, after he had a chance to, to go showcase his skills as a potential, you know, new starter for, for the Canadian defense going forward, at least more often than he started in the last few years, that's for sure. And now with Malmo, his confidence has been sky high. Two clean sheets. He made the team of the week in the, the first week. And this most recent clean sheet was very impressive. A road 1-0 win to keep Malmo undefeated with nine points out of a possible nine in three games. And Cornelius is just looking excellent. I mean, we know what he can do in the box. He's very good in the air. He's, he's getting stuck in on his duels, getting stuck in on the ground like he always does. But he's just, his passing is what's grown immensely. He's getting so much more involved in the buildup. He's pushing up the field uh, and he's taking more risks. And he, he's showing just this understanding of, of, you know, when to make these tackles, when to push forward, when to, to, to do all these little things. And it's important to remember because he got to the position a little later, you know, at just uh, 18, 19, he became a center back. So yeah, he was always good in the air. He was always good at some of those easier skills that he just kind of naturally had, but it took time to, to understand the position, to, to understand space and to understand uh, just all those little things. And I think through his time with the white caps, then his very impressive loan in Greece, he, he you can tell he picked up a lot of those details and now he gets moved like this to Malmo where he gets to be the guy on that center back corpse on a good team. He's just really taken a huge step forward. And I think that's going to be great for his confidence. This is the perfect move for him. And for Canada, all of a sudden it makes him one of their top center back options. He's someone that should be on the team sheet a lot more going forward if this is the case. And you can imagine him pairing with the Kamal Miller, pairing with the Scott Candy, pairing with Steven Vittori, all these different options depending on who's in form. So perfect move so far from Cornelius and uh, it'll be interesting to see if, he, you know, just how he continues to develop uh, as Malma makes him the, the sort of the main man back there in their, their defensive system. This past weekend, Sam Atakubi was back in action, starting and playing all 90 minutes as a left back in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, Atakubi had 72 touches, he completed 91% of his passes, had one shot, six recoveries, he created five chances, and he got an assist. Atakubi's assist came from a perfect delivery from the left-hand side for Rashitska to finish off. Galatasaray went on to win the match 4-1 to sit first place in the table with a 22-3-3 record, 6 points clear of second place Fenerbahce. Atakubi is absolutely loving life right now at Galatasaray. He's an impact player for them and is an immediate starter, which is very difficult to do when you make these types of transfers. 
And considering how difficult these last few months have been for Adekubi after everything that's happened, this is fantastic to see him doing so well. This past weekend, Ismail Kone started the match on the bench and came on as a halftime sub. Kone went on to have 22 touches, three recoveries, he created three chances, completed 76% of his passes, and he picked up his first assist for the club. For the assist, Kone picked out Pedro, who curled in a beauty to find the back of the net. Watford went on to win the match 2-0 against Bristol City, and due to Kone's performance, midweek he earned himself a start, but unfortunately was subbed off at halftime after not making much of an impression. Watford went on to lose that match 3-1 against Cardiff to sit 12th place in the table with a 15-14-14 record. This was Kone's first goal contribution since joining Watford. He has started in 11 matches featuring in a total of 14. He's adapting well so far to life in England and it was great to see him get that first assist. Watford have been very disappointing so far this season. They will not get promoted, which means that Ismail Kone could spend next season out on loan. When he joined Watford, it was determined that whether they got promoted or not, he could head to Italy to go on loan at Udinese. But because he's playing pretty well so far for Watford and he's getting this experience, I'm curious to see if that's still the plan or if he could spend next season with Watford. This past weekend, Eveline Vienne had herself a performance to remember where she scored three goals, picked up an assist, and helped her side pick up a massive 4-0 victory. Already very early on into the new season, Vienne has four goals in three matches, and she's already looking on pace to better her 21 goals she scored the last campaign. Eveline Vienne just can't stop scoring for, for Christian studs, and this weekend was just a fantastic example of it. I mean, a hat trick is always something to be proud of as a striker, and, you know, Eveline Vienne is had her fair share of you know multi-goal performances in christian studs including you know past hat tricks but this one was special i mean just looking at the goals the way she took them one was just an incredible long shot where caught the keeper flat-footed hit it perfectly put it in the low corner you know and then the second one gets a breakaway and then has the confidence to go around the keeper and then slot it home and then just the last one was a back heel flick you know, any, any striker in the world is, is looking at that and be like, that's the sort of goals you want to score, especially to complete a hat trick. Had an assist in there for good measure. And just looking at the numbers for Evelyn Vies, so she's gone to Christian Studs, just it, it almost makes you fall on the floor. I mean, four league goals this season, five in all competitions, of course, very early days in the season, just weeks in. But then you look, you know, across the board, she has 25 league goals since the start of last year. And, you know, she's already got 30. Uh, you know, in all competitions since the start of last year. And also, you know, 10 plus assists since then. It's just the production has been outstanding. And Sweden's a good league. They're a league that consistently in the past, you know, five, six years have been amongst the top five in the UEFA coefficients. You know, on the women's side, it's consistently a league that pushes talent into the top leagues. You look at Canada, for example, Sabrina D'Angelo was very good goalkeeper in Sweden, got a move to Arsenal. So on many levels, Evelyn Vienna's form in Sweden is encouraging because show she's scoring at a good level. It's something that Canada should look at. You know, they, you know, there's some inconsistencies up front. Who can score the goals? Vienna has four goals for Canada in her career despite limited minutes. It shows that she should potentially be playing more at the World Cup given her form in Sweden. And then long term, it shows that if she keeps this up, she's not going to be at Christian Stead's past this season it feels like surely a team in you know in england and france or one you know one of the top teams so to speak is going to go look at her and bring her in so exciting times for Evelyn Vienne and hopefully she can keep uh, scoring at this rate over the weekend charles andreas brim started and played all 90 minutes as a striker in a 3-4-2-1 system in the match brim had 47 touches had four shots created two chances had three successful dribbles hit the woodwork once and picked up an assist it was yet another fantastic performance from Brim as FC Eindhoven went on to draw the match 2-2 to sit 7th place in the table with a 14-9-10 record. With that assist, Brim now takes his league total to 10 goals and 7 assists and 25 appearances this season. If he can replicate this type of form, you would have to imagine he will play some type of role in the upcoming Nations League or Gold Cup tournament for Canada. This past weekend, Dominic Zator started and played all 90 minutes as a right back in a 4-1-4-1 system. In the match, Zator had 73 touches, Four shots, he created three chances, had three clearances, seven recoveries, scored a goal, picked up an assist, and was the man of the match in a fantastic showing for the fullback. This was the tour's best performance since moving to Poland, and his first goal for the club was a beauty as he had a looping header that perfectly found the back of the net. Corona Key also went on to win the match 2-1 to sit 11th place in the table with a 9-7-12 record and are now three points above the relegation places. Ever since the tour went to Poland, he has been in fantastic form and keeps improving each week. Corona Kielsa have also completely turned around their form since the addition of Zator, and it's no wonder why John Herman called him up for the last international window. 
Transferring to a new club is never easy, but Dominic Zator is certainly making it look that way. It is a fantastic story seeing a player go from the Canadian Premier League over to Europe and find so much success right away. That is all the time we have for in this edition of Canadians Abroad. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to tune in for next week's update.